Theodore and the Cat with the Missing Sock by Corey Q. Tan Hello, little kitty, said Annabelle. Why do you look so sad? Meow, lamented the strange little black cat. Annabelle couldn't recall seeing him in the neighborhood. Somehow, she found this cat a little unusual, but she just couldn't explain why. Oh, I know, exclaimed Theodore excitedly over his discovery. This kitty has only three white socks. Oh yeah, but what's wrong with that? Asked Annabelle innocently, although she did find the cat rather odd looking with one missing sock. Meow, 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 continued the cat. Oh, I know, exclaimed Theodore again. He's saying that everyone else has four socks. He's the only one with three. Annabelle was surprised Theodore could understand cat language. Annabelle took a look around the high street just across. Theodore was right. All the pets she saw had four socks. She was surprised she had never noticed this before. Poor little kitty, cried Annabelle. No wonder he's homeless. Annabelle suddenly felt so sad for the little black cat. Your room's in such a mess, gasped Mum as she stood leaning against the door. What are you looking for, my dear? This poor little kitty needs help, pleaded Annabelle. What little kitty? asked Mum, getting more confused than ever. Didn't I tell you not to let any stray cat into our house? She was beginning to sound annoyed, too. Mum, this poor kitty is missing one sock. I'm trying to find one that will fit him. Without it, he is incomplete and nobody wants him. Oh, I see. Mum finally got the picture. Poor little kitty, don't worry. I know exactly what to do. Just give me a minute, said Mum as she disappeared into the next room. See, I still keep some of the stuff from the time when you were a cute little baby, said Mum as she came back with a rusty cookie tin. Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat were intrigued by the old objects inside the tin. Suddenly, they felt transported back in a time machine. There were rattlers, colorful hoops, an old photograph of baby Annabelle, a milk bottle, and baby Annabelle's little white sock. This is just the right size for Kitty, rejoiced Annabelle. Suddenly, a gust of wind blasted through the window, sending the curtains flying and objects in the room tumbling through the air. But that wasn't any wind. It was an enormous pelican that had broken into the room and, like a flash of lightning, snatched away Mum's cookie tin. The rude intruder had terrific-looking eyes that would send chills up your spine. Its wings were so big they could touch both ends of the room. Its feathers were a striking cobalt green and fluttered everywhere as the big bird flapped its wings frenziedly in the small enclosure. What a chaotic scene! The pelican must have thought there were cookies in the tin. That was an easy one, gloated the pelican, feeling so pleased with itself for the flawless operation. But the pelican's joy was short-lived, for it quickly met its match. A majestic bald eagle with brilliant shimmering colors had appeared from nowhere and stopped right in the bird thief's path. Stunned by the sudden challenge, the pelican loosened its grip on the cookie tin and could do nothing but watch as it tumbled down towards the tiny Lego-like houses below. Angry and confused, the pelican had no choice but to fly away empty-handed. What a bad day! This silly bird probably had never seen a kite before in its life. 
As the cookie tin plummeted back to earth, the little white sock fell out and landed in the center of a quiet cobblestone walkway. Meanwhile, Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat, who had witnessed the dramatic action in the sky, were out searching frantically for the little white sock. They must have it back. But they were a minute too late. A white fluffy Labrador retriever, who happened to be there at the right place in the right time, had just picked up the curious little sock. It was his lucky day indeed. Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat were furious. Hey, that doesn't belong to you, growled Annabelle. Anyway, what do you need a sock for? But none of them dared to approach the Labrador to ask for their item back. He was, after all, a pretty big dog. Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat had no choice but to follow the Labrador closely from behind and wait patiently for their chance to strike. Meanwhile, the Labrador was so overjoyed as he trotted happily through the busy streets, totally unaware that he was being followed. In fact, he was oblivious to the extent of being negligent. As the white Labrador strolled down a posh shopping street, something at the side of the pavement caught his eyes, a bin full of goodies. Instantly, he forgot all about his newfound toy, chucking it carelessly to one side as he began his treasure hunt in earnest. This was the golden opportunity that Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat had been waiting for. Without any hesitation, Annabelle grabbed the forsaken sock and bolted off in the opposite direction with Theodore and the little black cat following closely behind. They had no idea where they were running to, just as long as they were out of sight from that dreadful dog. Phew, that was close, heaved Annabelle with a sigh of relief after the mad sprint. She had never run so fast in her life, not even at the school sports day. With Theodore riding on his back, the little black cat had a really hard time keeping up. Theodore was small, but certainly not light. As the trio stopped to catch a breath, they were surprised to find themselves in front of a park they never knew existed. Antique floor tiles and lush foliage extended inwards as far as their eyes could see. Chilly winds murmured and leaves rustled as a sinister air shrouded the park in thick suspense. A pair of imposing stone columns stood on either side of the ornate cast iron gate as if guarding an untold secret, and two fearsome gargoyles stood sentry at high vantage points, glaring at anyone who dared intrude. Let's hide in here, suggested Annabelle. She was so worried that the Labrador would show up at any moment. Are you sure about that? shuddered Theodore. I don't have a good feeling about this place. Meow, agreed the little black cat. And they were right. Annabelle regretted it as soon as they entered the strange, creepy park. Tall, thick hedges surrounded them in all directions, making it hard for them to see what was in front. As the three friends stepped gingerly forward, they were gripped by an uneasy feeling that something bad was about to happen. Careful, cried Theodore, as he instantly regretted raising his voice. Annabelle had nearly stepped on a sleeping gnome. Not a real garden gnome, but a stone sculpture so lifelike it looked as though it might wake up at any moment. I wonder where we are, gasped Annabelle inaudibly. Meow, whimpered the little black cat, feeling very lost and scared indeed. And it soon became clear to them they were inside a giant garden maze. Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat were dumbfounded, awestruck by this strange, bewildering garden. 
At every turn and corner stood a stone sculpture, a praying angel, another sleeping gnome, a magical unicorn, a giant toad, a pretty little fairy, and even a life-size lion. What if it were to come alive? It was so quiet here that the three friends dared not make a sound for fear of waking up any of the sculptures. Suddenly, there was a commotion behind one of the hedges. It sounded like children bickering. Who could it be? wondered the trio as they peeped cautiously through gaps in the hedge. It was two little boys. No, two little boy sculptures caught up in a fight. In fact, they looked just like a pair of identical twins. What can the matter be? asked Annabelle as she couldn't help but intervene. It's all his fault, said the boy on the right as the two stopped their tussle momentarily and turned to face Annabelle. No, it's all his, insisted the one on the left. Great, since you are here, why don't you be our judge? Is peanut butter a kind of butter? asked the first boy. No way! Peanut butter is definitely not butter, insisted the other. Oh, so that's what it's all about, exclaimed Annabelle. Is this what the two of you were fighting over? asked Theodore. Meow, sighed the little black cat. Yes, tell him he's wrong, the boy on the right started again. No, he's the one who is wrong, bellowed the other. Well, mused Theodore pensively as he put on his thinking cap. He was preparing to say something wise. That's a very good question. For me, I have always wondered if a rectangle is a type of square, or the square a type of rectangle. Of course a square is a type of rectangle, laughed the boy on the right. No, a rectangle is a type of square, countered the other, and the two of them became embroiled in yet another battle. Have you seen my little white sock? Annabelle asked suddenly. I was holding it in my hand a moment ago. The three friends were so distracted by the senseless quarrel of the two sculpture boys that they didn't realize that the little white sock was missing. Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat immediately left the two sculpture boys to their never-ending problem and began to search high and low for the missing sock. They searched everywhere from inside the garden all the way out to the main street, but the little white sock was nowhere to be found. Before long, the three friends had reached the end of the main street and then the edge of the town where the river cut through. A red brick bridge with colossal columns held the two banks together like interlocking arms pushing against the relentless river. At the muddy river bank, long cattails and tall wavy reeds with feathery tails danced to the rhythm of the wind, as purple flowers lit up the earth like glittering spotlights. Look! jumped Theodore all of a sudden. Do you see what I see? Annabelle and the little black cat promptly looked up in the direction Theodore was pointing. A fluffy white Labrador was skipping merrily along across the monumental bridge. It was the white Labrador. He was the one who took the sock. Annabelle and friends had no idea how the sock ended up with the Labrador again, but they had to get it back. And luck was on their side. Just as the Labrador was savoring his success for recapturing the sock, a group of marathon runners came dashing head-on towards him like a great moving wall. There were so many of them that the poor dog had nowhere to run and ended up being squeezed and squashed in between. Caught by surprise by the sudden oncoming traffic, the Labrador accidentally let go of his little white sock. It was windy up on the bridge, and in an instant, the little white sock was swept high up into the sky like a shot fired by a catapult. The poor Labrador could do nothing but watch helplessly as the sock quickly became a tiny speck in the sky. 
How true it was when they say, one man's misery is another man's fortune. The little white sock knocked around in the air like a runaway balloon before making a crash landing in the gushing river below. Bobbing up and down in the choppy water, it was now just a stone's throw away from Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat. Here's our chance, cried Theodore triumphantly. Meow, cheered the cat. Annabelle quickly looked around for anything they could use to retrieve the sock. A discarded cardboard box was lying around nearby, and an inspiration came to Annabelle. The box was just the right size for the three of them. With a shove and a thrust, the three friends successfully launched their new boat into the turbulent river. Look, there it is, exclaimed Annabelle as she pointed to a white object floating on the choppy water surface. It's just a little further ahead. But before they knew it, Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat had already drifted into the open sea with the sock no longer to be seen. Suddenly, the sky darkened. An enormous mass of dark clouds gathered at the horizon like truckloads of mushrooms being poured out at once. Flashes of lightning zapped the surface of the sea with the fury of a beast unleashing its wrath, and the sound of thunderclaps rang non-stop in the air like cymbals in an orchestra. Huge cargo ships shuddered like frightened children as the billowing clouds drew a black curtain across the sky. I... I... I think we should turn back, begged Theodore. Meow, whimpered the cat. No, we must press on, insisted Annabelle. I'm sure we can find the sock. She had never been more brave and persistent. It didn't take long for the storm clouds to catch up with them. Soon, Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat found themselves engulfed in total darkness and a perfect storm. Gigantic waves rose and fell and raindrops pelted down like rubber bullets as the three friends were being tossed up and down in the sea like helpless dolls. Miraculously, the cardboard box managed to hold up in one piece. Look, there it is, cried Theodore at the top of his voice, pointing to a white object struggling in the water. Just ahead of them, it was the little white sock. Meow, yelled the cat jubilantly. But it was no time to celebrate yet. Before the three friends could reach it, a familiar-looking creature with thick white fur appeared from nowhere and nimbly intercepted the sock. It was the White Labrador. No one had any idea how the amazing dog made it there in the middle of the storm. But one thing was for sure. He was the bravest, most determined dog Annabelle and friends had ever seen. By the time the storm died down and the White Labrador finally made it to the shore, it was already dusk. The sea was calm and the sky was painted a pretty pink as the evening clouds assembled like delicious cotton candies. The cargo ships were on their way again and fishermen were getting ready for their final catch of the day. Soaked from head to toe, the white Labrador was vigorously shaking himself dry on the glistening sand. He was totally exhausted, but it was all worth it because he's got the sock back. But oh no, the sock was all torn and tattered. The tumultuous voyage from Annabelle's bedroom to the garden, then to the main street, and finally into the stormy sea, had left the little white sock in a sad and sorry state. As the white Labrador stared sorrowfully at what was left of the sock lying motionlessly in front of him, tears welled up in his eyes. He should have been more careful with the sock. By now, Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat had also made it back to the shore. And even from a distance, the three friends could make out what had happened to their poor little white sock. Annabelle was furious. 
That was my little white sock, growled Annabelle as she clenched her fist in anger. Theodore had never seen his best friend so mad before. Meow, protested the cat. The three friends decided to follow the white Labrador back to his home. They were going to demand an explanation from his owner. Meanwhile, it was getting dark and people were busy rushing back to their warm, cozy homes. The three friends managed to follow the white Labrador back to his home, an old little house squashed between a luxury hotel and a magnificent skyscraper. If the exterior of the house looked old and run down, the interior was even worse. As Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat peered through the grimy window, all they could see was a dim, decrepit room with nothing but a few pieces of old furniture and a discolored family photo hanging on the wall. There were cobwebs everywhere, and the wallpapers were torn and peeling off, revealing the raw brick walls beneath. There were even basins placed on the floor to collect rainwater from the leaking roof the white Labrador could be seen curled up on the floor next to a wooden bed where a young girl was seated, looking very grumpy indeed. His owner was a beautiful young girl with long flaxen hair and radiant glowing skin. She was holding on to a gray walking stick and had a white sock on her left foot. Wait! The girl was blind and her faithful dog was trying to replace her missing sock. What an astonishing revelation! Stunned and lost for words, Annabelle, Theodore, and the little black cat stood aimlessly in the middle of the busy evening street, wondering what to do next. Shall we go home? asked Annabelle finally. Yes, I'm tired and hungry, replied Theodore. Meow, concurred the cat. And the three friends happily made their way home, no longer feeling angry with the white Labrador retriever or his owner. Before they went, Annabelle left something behind. The next morning, Annabelle and Theodore met the little black cat again at the very same spot they met the day before. He was looking even more dejected than before. Even though the whole misadventure was for a good cause, the poor kitty was still missing one sock. It's not so bad, you know, comforted Annabelle. You don't have to be perfect. You are good enough. Yeah, cheer up, mate. It's not the end of the world, added Theodore. But the cat was simply inconsolable. Just then, a gorgeous old lady appeared from around the corner, surprising everyone. She was beautifully dressed in an exquisite tailored jacket and a purple velvet dress. She wore splendid earrings and bracelets, and her branded sunglasses made her look as glamorous as a movie star. "'What a unique little cat!' exclaimed the stranger. "'It only has three white socks!' Meow, said the little black cat in response, embarrassed by the rare and unexpected compliment. Would you like to come home with me? inquired the kind old lady in a gentle voice. Meow, affirmed the cat enthusiastically. It was a beautiful Sunday morning, a perfect day for an imperfect cat to find his new home. As Annabelle and Theodore waved goodbye to the little black cat, they kept wondering if they would ever see him again. But what they knew for sure was that he had finally found someone who appreciated him for who he was. The End